What's going on guys? So we have my dad's 1973 Ford Super Camper Special F350. This is a one ton truck. And if you've seen any of the previous videos and you've seen the leaf pack, you understand why this is a one ton truck. Very special truck, very different than most trucks, even for that generation, because the rear axle was pushed back seven inches further than your traditional F100 or even an F250 truck. And the reason for that was to be able to balance out a load if you were going to put a big camper in the back of the truck. Right, Jake? That's my friend Jake from eTrailer. It's actually a pop-up poster they sent me, but it's found a new home in the shop. Uh, that said, they've done some really interesting things. Go check out the other videos we've made on this truck because, again, it's a very unique truck. One of the videos was related to a topic that a lot of people chimed in about, and it's one that we want to get your opinion on. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got my dad here with me. You want to say hello? Hello. So this is the factory mirror that is on this specific truck. It's a towing mirror. You got your big flat mirror and then you got your convex mirror right here. And essentially what this is designed for is to use this to see your, your blind spot. And this sticks out extra far so you can kind of see down the side of your truck and, and past what you might have on the back. In the case of this truck, typically a camper on the bed. Uh, we talked about the fact that my dad didn't really, it's not that he didn't care for this. He just wanted something that was a little bit more flexible for how he's going to use the truck. And I don't really blame him. This is a really cool mirror setup. And, and I actually like it probably as much as anybody else who's watched the videos. But the mirror that he would like to replace it with is this mirror. Also a Ford mirror, right? And it won't attach exactly right here. We'd remove this mirror assembly and it would go back a little further. But this is the mirror that he was talking about replacing this mirror with. So basically whenever this bolts in place, again, still Ford mirror, still looks really, really um, I guess correct to the period of this truck and the whole assembly folds in and out of the way So now that you've seen this mirror and it would mount a little higher, right? It would mount That's pretty much in the same place. Oh, this is where it goes yep. Okay, so it goes below this piece right here it mounts right there But it would mount probably what about four inches further forward yeah. Yeah. So it would mount essentially where this one's mounted, but what do you guys think? Yeah, definitely want to know your opinion um, if we should stick with this or if we should move to this the question is is do you care? So if everyone says, hey, stick with this mirror, are we going to cave to peer pressure from social media or are we going to go with this mirror? Keep in mind that peer pressure is coming from a lot of folks who have probably owned these trucks, love these trucks, and just want the truck to look as good as possible. What do you think? Well, I understand, I understand the desirability for the West Coast mirrors. I like them too, but they limit the truck in a couple of ways. It makes it pretty wide when you're not carrying the camper. And they don't fold in any way, so you can't go through a car wash with them. And I'm getting old, so I'm getting lazy. I don't like to wash my own truck if I don't have to. I'd like to go through a car wash, and these mirrors will fold against the side, so they can go through a car wash. Yeah, my dad just turned 47, so he struggles with doing cement. No, I'm kidding. He's, uh, he's in his 70s, and definitely uh, don't want him to have to exert himself any more than he has to. Because um, you already can't get the guy to sit down. That said, I kind of understand where he's going with this. You know, this is this is a good setup. The mirror looks better than what I thought it would look like before he showed it to me. So what do you guys think? I'm kind of inclined to switch to this mirror as well. Um, I do like these mirrors. They look nice. They look massive. I know a lot of people are looking at that. But if it were your truck, you're not going to be towing big trailers with it. You're probably not going to throw a big camper in the back. It's going to be a dependable daily driver. What mirror would you elect to go with? Leave a comment below. Okay, so I know a concern a lot of people would have, and the reason why a lot of people might say not to remove these is because the holes that would be left in the bodywork if you removed the assembly here. Now, I just mentioned, well, maybe you leave the brackets because everything kind of just bolts to the brackets, and you could always leave the OEM brackets on there in case you ever wanted to put these mirrors back on. And what my father was saying is his idea was just to get little plastic plugs, plug them through, and paint match them to the truck. And that's actually a pretty good idea because... For the most part, the interior panel of these doors do get wet. Water comes in, it goes down the glass, and it gets behind there. So I don't think you have to worry about any rust or corrosion in a way that you wouldn't normally have to deal with it on any pickup truck. Um, but that said, there's definitely areas up here and areas right here that normally don't get wet. And you don't want water to accumulate, but it's still going to be able to flow down. Um, and you could always put just like a little dab of some silicone on the back of it and plug it in just so it, it's removable, but at the same time watertight. But what do you think? Now that you know what his plans are, 
if he removes this, that he's not going to be doing Bondo, no body work to it. It's basically to plug it and then touch it up to paint match them so the holes aren't there. He's going to hold on to the mirrors. He's not going to sell them and get rid of them in case he ever wants to put them back on. Um, but he would have to essentially do the same thing to the new mirror because it does not match the bolt or the, the holes that are currently there. So he'd have to get plugs there. If he puts the new mirrors on, it would require drilling new holes into the door, though. So that's a definite. Unless we well, use double-sided the, tape. Hey, the, I'm kidding. The, the new mirrors come with plastic threaded inserts for the doors where the screws would mount. So there'd be some rust control when you drill the hole for the plastic inserts, but it's not undoable. Yeah. It wouldn't be that bad. We'd probably want to put like a dab of zinc coating or something on the inside of there, too, just to keep it from... Or keep it protected a little bit. But what do you guys think? Leave a comment. We're, we're kind of going back and forth. As soon as we ended the first little segment there, he said, so what do you think people are going to say? I think most people are going to say keep the mirrors on here uh, only because why do you want to drill new holes into a truck? But I think a lot of people, practically speaking, would agree that putting the new mirrors on is the better route to go if, again, if you didn't have the concern, of course, of drilling holes. But let us know in the comments. Okay, so today's project is going to be kind of an interesting one. It's one that we've talked about. Again, whenever you look at the projects that we plan on doing to this truck or the upgrades we plan on doing to this truck, the key here is that it's going to be a daily driver and it needs to be safer than it was or it currently is. There's been a lot of advancements in many areas that improve your ability to drive a vehicle today that just weren't available then. And even some of those advancements can help you in terms of managing power and power draw. And I think a lot of people know where we're going here. So one of the upgrades that we talked about doing are the headlights. So the headlights work, and they cast as much light as you would probably expect. I venture to say Every light assembly in this truck has probably been replaced with a new one. I really doubt these are the factory bulbs. And when I say bulbs, back in the day, the bulb didn't come out of here. You had to replace the entire light assembly. These are sealed beam headlights, which means this entire piece right here had to be replaced. And then, you know, more modern vehicles, of course, have light bulbs that simply attach to the back. And on a lot of vehicles, you can't even replace anything anymore because it's all LED or xenon and... The cost of replacing it means you really have to replace the entire headlight assembly. But back then, these were a sealed beam headlight, and you had to buy the entire headlight assembly. And if you don't know what that size is, that's probably a 7-inch diameter bulb. That thing's pretty big. So we are going to pull these out, and we're going to upgrade to a little newer technology. Let me show you what we're going to put in. So you see all those really cool cars driving down the road that have halo rings on them now, right? Pretty much every manufacturer is doing it, and everybody with a Jeep replaces their factory Jeep headlights with these halo ring headlights. That is the look we are going for. We want to have this thing look like a BMW while it drives down there. I'm totally kidding. Um, so these are what we found. They are pretty much a direct replacement. They have a halo beam or a little halo ring, I'm sorry, that goes around the outside of it, which will not be connected. We just don't want that to happen. Um, it will give the truck an entirely not desirable look from what we're trying to accomplish here. If it was going to be some type of a hot rod lowered truck that was you know, designed to compete in car shows against other hot rods, it might be something we'd consider, but that's not the look we're going for. So the halo ring is not going to be used. Now, the one question I have for my dad is... They make a projector version of this headlight assembly where you actually have a projector inside. And I know they look a lot more modern, which is not a look you're going for, but they tend to cast, if you get a good one, they tend to cast a really nice wide uh, cutoff beam. Basically, you get a lot of light on the road and you don't get much glare towards oncoming cars. Did you know that this was a reflector housing or is this what you're going for? I knew it was a reflector housing. It uses a standard H4 bulb. Okay, so these uh, use LED H4. Equivalent. Okay, and you already have the bulbs in. Yes, so these have little cooling fans on the back of it. So he has H4 LED bulbs that will be going in here, which means they are going to draw less power or they'll provide more light output for the power that they draw. So they could draw 35 watts but provide a lot more light output. Um, but it's going to be really interesting to see how they perform, especially from a uh, projection perspective, how they project onto the road, what the, the light swath looks like, and if the housings are built well enough to where they don't cast a bunch of glare above the road, basically to oncoming traffic. So we're going to get these in. we got to get those out, and that's going to be the next part of this project. All right, so my dad's already started removing the light. Looks like it's three Phillips head screws. He just has one more up top. If you want to go ahead and get that, and I'll hold the light bulb so it doesn't come out. So 
So what was the first car we worked on together? Classic car. 64 Pontiac Grand Prix. Uh, we did an MGB. That was a 73 model. Okay, so this is simply going to unplug from the back here. Out with the old, and again, this doesn't look like it's that super old. Not sure when this was manufactured. So this is pretty much just plug and play. Hopefully, you know if the mounting holes are in the same area. They should be. Okay. And what he's doing right now is he's simply tying up the light. Do you want to zip tie that, or we can let's cut the ends off and zip tie it so it at least looks clean. Okay, so it is in, light is on. Definitely see the difference in color temperature. All right, high beam. That looks like it's working. Low beam. Yeah, I'm gonna move the screen over so I can see the cutoff difference between the two. Well, that's actually pretty good. So they both look very similar. Looks like they're leveled out right. Is that on high beam? Or? Okay, that's low beam. So the high beam definitely is cleaner on the OEM headlight. This one's kind of blotchy. It goes off in that direction. I don't know if there's a way we can make an adjustment to that or not. But yeah, the high beam on the factory headlight definitely casts a better pattern. But we'll only know when we're done with everything and we drive it at night. Okay, so we have both headlights replaced, LED bulbs. They both look like they're lined up. High beams? High beams work. Let me move this over here real quick. Turn the high beam on. You know, that might, act that might not actually look that bad. Let me get this side. Low beam? No, they're actually working okay. Yeah. There we go. Well, that was easy enough. Okay, so, Jake, what do you think? Yeah, he's speechless. So, yeah, this was a pretty easy install. Simply uh, replacing the headlights, putting the new headlights in. Uh, maybe 20-minute job, not even that. Very, very quick job, super painless. But, yeah, leave a comment below on your opinion on the mirrors. That's a big one for us because that's a big project. Well, not a big, big project, but it's a relatively big project since we have to drill into the side of the truck. But we knocked out a great upgrade today, but the mirrors will definitely be another one. But it really just depends on the feedback and ultimately if we decide to follow that feedback. Next project we're going to do is actually replacing the door panels. So let me show you what's going on here. So these are the original door panels. I actually bet these are the originals. They're in pretty rough shape. Probably not going to do any repair up here because that looks kind of cool and rustic. But the door panels definitely need to be replaced. So that is a project for next time. Uh, we'll shoot how we do this. I think this is going to be a pretty interesting video. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell so you know when future videos go live on this truck. And give us your opinion on the mirrors. Should we swap them out? good anyways guys we're gonna wrap this one up hope you enjoyed the video if you haven't had a chance please take a moment subscribe to the channel give me a thumbs up 
and we'll talk to you again very soon.